colored pencil, it's gonna solve. It's gonna what? It's gonna, it's gonna just. Oh, whoops! Let's stop recording. Here's whoa. Isn't that amazing? It's totally different. So it's almost like you're you can use it like a watercolor. I should probably use a darker one if you want to demo sure. with a darker one. Like I knew they had these, so of course it makes sense to have water soluble graphite. It looks like gray poop. <laughs> hello. Ooh, hello. Ooh, and it's real gold. Guys, I'm at Haley's studio. <laughs> it's really, really cool in here. There's so many neat things. This is our oh, this is our film setup, and yeah. Uh. <laughs> the drawings on this are so rad. Ooh, can I pick it up? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that one's the card for the heavens. It's really nice to just meditate on them and just like have a card there to like focus on. It's straight about the heavens. <laughs> sure. Cool. I think I'm going to look at all my witchy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Stumbled into it about like a year ago. I'm just really drawn to like the visual symbols and like the archetypes. Oh, okay. This is good. <laughs> I'm like already too tall. It can go way taller than the <laughs> chairs. You're pretty tall though too, right? Like, no, this one's no. like five, eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hello, YouTube. <laughs> um, I'm Robin Seelark, and this is my friend, Lisa. I met her through my Patreon, and <laughs> she came on a video that I did months ago when I did a week lock inside of painting. It was one of my art was so series. <laughs> <laughs> when I met Haley for the first time, this is our second time in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I met Haley for the first time, she showed me a bunch of different materials that I had never heard of or used before. And so I figured, let's do a full video. Uh, so I contacted Haley. And then she sent me a really long <laughs> list of things I had never heard of before. <laughs> so today's video, we're gonna we're gonna learn some new art materials. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> So this is a watercolor pencil, which you've probably heard of before. If you haven't, it's a colored pencil that is water soluble. <laughs> Just get in there with water. Totally. <laughs> you know, oh, that's yeah. nice. That is really yeah. nice. Mm, pull it through. That's nice when you pull it through. That looks so cool. <laughs> it's gonna just, oh, whoops, let's stop recording. <laughs> What you may not have heard of, which I have not heard of, is this. So the first one is water-soluble graphite pencils. Uh, there's Faber-Castell, graphite aquarelle, and then general sketch and wash. So what do these do? <laughs> so just like a regular pencil, say that you wanted to like have the shadow um, be more filled in, you would just take a brush, any old brush, just dip it into water, and then Le oh. blends. <laughs> Sometimes with pencils, you can find that like they get really gritty, and that may be the desired effect you're going for. But sometimes in the shadows, you want that to really not be so textured. And in that case, this is really good at just smoothing and breaking that down. These are our two different brands. We're gonna have links to most of the supplies in the description. These were called water soluble graphite. Is that right? Yeah, water soluble graphite pencils. It can be really nice for on the go, like sketching as well, just to kind of mix things up a bit. Yeah, that seems like a good travel kit supply to have. And then of course, if you do a lot heavier shading, you're gonna get a lot more graphite pigment. I don't know what you would call that. You I feel can like it works. <laughs> yeah, you can see how dark it gets. It's almost like you're, you can use it like a watercolor. That's cool, I didn't, yeah, because I, I didn't realize that they had water-soluble graphite. Like, I knew they had these, so of course it makes sense to have water-soluble graphite. They function very similar. Whoop. Another one is, um, like, chalk, chalk pastel pencils. Oh yeah, I don't know what that is. So pastel chalk you've probably seen before, I imagine. This is a more common sort of supply. I have worked with colored uh, charcoal, but it's a little bit different than this material. What I had not heard of was these. So these are pastel chalk pencils, and they work Ooh. just like this, except... Focus. What they work really well for is getting a really precise line, and you can get it a lot more controlled versus if you use the stick, you get 
like a much broader stroke. So just like for comparison, you can kind of see these are pretty tough. They're harder materials and it's a little bit difficult to get a good line with it. You can go on the edge, but these you have so much control with and they're actually really pigmented, which is nice. I liked what you were saying about them being erasable as well and coming with this eraser on the end. You need to shave it down, but if you shave it down, you could get like a much, you could draw with the whole chalk pencil. What's that mean, to shave it down? A sandpaper bat. Oh. You can use this to sharpen these pencils as well, if you want to get a really fine point. So you can get a really broad stroke, which can be nice if you're doing like figure drawing or something. Yeah, and to be honest, I haven't heard of this before either. So this is just a short sandpaper pad. Looks like you can pull it off like a regular drawing pad when you're done with it. So if you need to file down your pastels or sharpen one of your pencils, that would work. Here's another one. It's a lot like, it's Prismacolor Color Erase. So they're, they're colored pencils, but you can erase them, which is really oh. nice for like, sketching. A lot of animators will use them. So this next one is a Prismacolor Coal Erase. Coal Erase. Prismacolor Coal Erase. It's like your regular colored pencil, except that it has an eraser on the end and it erases really nicely. I should probably use a darker one if you want to demo sure. with a darker one. Do regular colored pencils not erase? No, as well? they have more of a waxy base. Here's a regular color pencil for comparison. And then if you want to try erasing that, it just kind of smudges it. <laughs> so this is the difference between the coal erase pencil and a regular Prismacolor colored pencil. So this is the water soluble oh, graphite yeah. putty. Yeah, this one okay. I brought over to your house last time. It, it makes a big mess. If you yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> cool. So the first time I was introduced to this stuff, if you want to just pull. yeah, totally. The first time I was introduced to this stuff is when Haley came over last time, and <laughs> yeah, you probably have no idea what this is. Looking at it, <laughs> it's really messy. It kind of feels like clay. It's cold. What is it, Haley? So this is actually water-soluble graphite putty. Sorry, let me put this on now. Definitely. Okay. So this is water-soluble graphite putty, and you can sculpt it to any shape you want. You can kind of just play with it. And then you can also just add water and paint with it. It kind of does everything. It's very messy. It's perfect for like, if you just want to make a mess and go to town. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm. oh you can go over the water areas too like you see so the difference cool. how it's already wet there yeah <laughs> so this is like that water soluble graphite pencil we just had except it's everywhere yeah except way <laughs> crazier <laughs> and you can get like nice cool textures however you want to bend it make it and yeah it's quite fun <laughs> Have you used this for art or did you more buy this as novelty? I bought this as a novelty to kind of get me out of an art rut and I've used it for some sketches but I haven't, I haven't really gone crazy with it yet. I think like you could if you wanted to even have like a pile of this and just straight up be painting with charcoal because see how I'm like dipping into this almost like it's my palette color and then bringing it over here and I can just paint with it. If Haley would stop painting over my <laughs> <laughs> This is the packaging for it. it looks like gray poop. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is really, <laughs> really messy. <laughs> really messy. I think I'm also going to um, just let it soak in water for a little bit because it's kind of dried out, which is why it's like very crumbly. Mm, so it's less crumbly when you yeah. soak it? <laughs> so you, you soak it sometimes. Yeah, you just get it kind of wet in there. <laughs> like, oh, you put water inside of the yeah, yeah. container. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so messy. And while Haley's away, I can make some 
<laughs> painting marks uninterrupted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what we're doing next? Should I wipe my hands off? <laughs> uh, we switch sides because I'm being too loud for the mic and <laughs> I'm not being too quiet. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So tell me about what's the next. Okay, so doing. next up is painting with mica, which is mica. like it's very um. Ooh, gives you a really nice metallic look. So this, see this is mica that is suspended in like an acrylic binder. Oh. And so you get it like really nice, like you get really nice textures with this. And then this is grinded mica pigment. Whoa, okay. Which... Haley just told me these are mica suspended in an acrylic binder. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, yeah. And then these are ground down mica. So if you don't know what mica is, they kind of have samples of it on the outside of this for you. It's this like metallic sheet like it's particle that's inside of it. Like it can get mixed in with rocks. Oh, okay. So this is using the gold mica flakes right here. You can see there's also gold leaf on here as well. Okay, so the gold mica flakes are this part? Yeah, the like little spark sparkle glittery things. These ones are using specifically the ground up mica pigment. So this is the fine tech and then the col colero. Colero. Um, so basically these ones are going to get you working with like thin metallic paint. You can see the sheen on there. It looks mm. kind of gross in there, but once it dries, it looks like that. Wow. This is Just large like... mica flakes. And then we'll show this again when it dries and it will be a lot prettier then. <laughs> and this is the small mica flakes. So large flakes smaller flakes and then this is small silver and then silver yeah that's really cool this is legitimately just like chunks of <laughs> glitter like, and sparkles yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the like finer mica so you just take some water to activate it and you need a fair bit of water something you can do is you can put down a layer of black acrylic. So it helps to put down a layer of black behind it, or it, you can put a bl layer you of black. You can, and then this will help the mica pigment pop a lot better. And alternatively to putting black acrylic down, you could use this black watercolor ground. Yeah, it works a lot like gesso, but for watercolor. How is it different from gesso? So it, what makes this different is that you can actually apply this to a wood surface or a paper, and then this can just like give you gesso or like supported ground for watercolor. What What's the benefit of using a watercolor ground? So a watercolor ground, it ends up giving you lots of like paper-like fibers and hmm. you can see it lays down a lot. It's, it's more textured than the acrylic and it gives you like a nice kind of almost cold pressed kind of texture like watercolor paper. I use white watercolor ground to paint on wood with watercolor. That's really cool because having a ground like this means that you can paint on materials like wood instead of paper and still use watercolor. I like to use the transparent watercolor ground if I am painting on wood and I want the wood grain to show through. This is also super good to use if you make mistakes in watercolor. If you're working on really ivory and like really white toned paper, then this can work really well to cover up your mistakes in watercolor and just like Kind of get a fresh start. Does it matter which one I go on top of? Nah. Okay. There we go. Wow. Okay, that shows up a lot more on top of black. You can see the difference between that and when it's just on the white paper. Seems like it's attaching to the black watercolor ground a little bit better than it is to the It has a little bit more grit than the acrylic, so. It, it seems like on camera it's picking up totally the same, so you're probably good if what you have at home is acrylic. Do you want to try one of the other colors of this? Oh yeah! Here's the purple. This is purple? Yeah, and then this one also I think is purple as well. <laughs> um, here's, whoa. Isn't that amazing? It's <laughs> totally different. Whoa. So that's on the black. Here's on the white. You literally can't <laughs> even see it on camera. Okay, well let's see what this color is. 
surprise time <laughs> on the paper. Can't see it. And then on this black. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Woo. It's like your hair color. Yeah, <laughs> it's like my hair color. He'll show up well in the white. Something kind of fun about when you're working with the mica paints is that um, they make your water very sparkly. Ooh. Okay. Be careful. Yeah, I'm right <laughs> over all your artwork. <laughs> you guys see that? Try this blue color or the green Ooh. one. Ooh. So we're adding India ink. So ooh. Hello. Ooh, hello. You guys can kind of see the mica particles floating around in here. It looks so much better. It's not so pretty. Yeah, can you imagine, like, so nice. Imagine like a mermaid tail with that. So this is a lot similar to the last thing we looked at, but this is black mica flake. It's definitely not as iridescent and it kind of just looks like gravel and it's like it just looks like dirt. Mm. Do you let yours dry this thickly sometimes? Yeah, you, you can honestly use it thick, thin. I really like how this one has like more of a purpley tint and then this one's like a more black and look how brown and orange it is around yeah that. i wonder if the brush wasn't fully washed out if that's oh what maybe that's, that's what it is Micah. so ignore this <laughs> <laughs> so that is what this coarse alumina looks like and this one would be the black mica flake small <laughs> All right, so next we have gold leaf. It comes in these little sheets. Uh, they can come in various sizes. And then, ooh, and it's real gold. But this one might be, I have some that is real, like 24 karat gold. I, this one, I believe is just um, imitation gold leaf. So I have heard of gold leaf before. I don't know if all of you have before. Haley uses it really interestingly in her paintings though. Okay, so this is one of her pieces where she used that gold leaf and you can see where it's a lot thicker and more textured and comes up off the page. And then areas where it's more molded down to this. Isn't this a beautiful piece also? <laughs> I feel like every painting you do of her is just so baller. <laughs> How did you do this in here? Cause it looks like you engraved into totally, it. Totally, yeah. So I use black acrylic right here. And then I actually use, sometimes I use acrylic paint as the adhesive to lay down the gold leaf. And then I think I just use like a pencil or something and I just scraped out mm -hmm. this and then the black acrylic showed through. And then here is like watered down uh, metallic gold acrylic. And then that's also the adhesive that I used here mm -hmm. too. You just take your brush and try and get a fair amount on here. And then I'm just gonna touch up in here. So I'm gonna just apply that wet acrylic paint and it's pretty haphazard. You just kind of get it in there. <laughs> if you are going to do this like really clumpy kind of textured, it's not going to be as archival. That's just something you have to know. I just want to show off the face on this. I really like the line work. Thanks, I actually used a white gel pen. Here. Just a white gel pen for those highlights. I actually, this is a more common tool, but I, this isn't something I really knew that people used. I've never really seen it in action. I think it's really lovely, the sketch work on here done with that. Thanks, yeah, I can just go over it. Like, Do you just generally use this for like texturing and highlights? Yeah, that's what it's perfect for. She said this one's more transparent. This one is a little bit more opaque. Signo brand. Signo, well, Uniball Signo. What is it? Uniball brand? Yeah, let's, I wanna, I wanna show how you do that really cool, like, thing with your fine tip applicator. Sure. Ooh, ooh, yeah. So you can see a really nice line <laughs> made out of that. I'm making a mess. <laughs> What is this message for us? Ooh. Ooh. Yes, of course. Ooh. Wow. Can you believe that artwork I made? Robin's surrounded by like 90 paintbrushes and she's just using her fingers. <laughs> it is so weird. Look how huge this is. Oh, ASMR, the worst kind. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Come back next week. Make sure you're subscribed and check out the links to our products if you're interested in any of that. And Haley's links in the description. And yeah, 
Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>